scattered out throughout the room. We got people outside smoking. Someone's in the bathroom. Another person sitting at a table over there. Uh, somebody's at the bar getting a drink. It's just literally, it's chaos. <laughs> Those of you who are having your wedding ceremony and your reception at the same location, you should consider starting your ceremony at a later time. Instead of doing it at 3 or 4 o'clock, you should start it at 5 or 6 p.m. Um, but this week, I wanted to talk about those of you who are considering hiring a party bus for your wedding day when the ceremony and reception are at the same location. So it's a it's piling on to last week's episode. And before I get started, I just want to say that I've DJed a lot of weddings over the years. And this is in no way, no way to show disrespect to any of them or anyone that's considering it, okay? I just want to clear that up. But just take this scenario into consideration. You have your guest arriving at 3.30. That ceremony will last roughly 10 minutes. Immediately following the ceremony, you and your wedding, uh, you and your wedding party are gonna dip out for two hours on a party bus, leaving a room full of guests till about 5.45. The wedding party is absolutely shit-faced because there were bottles a fireball and tequila and God only knows what else being passed around on the bus. So now everyone has to pee. Nobody's listening to anything, any type of direction to keep the night moving. And uh, we're trying to do the, the grand entrance when you arrive back at the venue. It's six o'clock and you've just been introduced. So now we're going to have the efficient say a blessing and you know that's supposed to start the dinner and then i'm supposed to start dismissing tables but we can't move along because the wedding party scattered scattered out throughout the room we got people outside smoking someone's in the bathroom another person sitting at a table over there uh somebody's at the bar getting a drink it's just literally it's chaos and, you know, I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, you're the DJ. Just make an announcement and everyone will be seated. But it's not that easy, especially if people are in the bathroom or outside smoking. So the next thing you know, it's 630 and your guests basically, uh, they've been waiting for their meal for three hours. Okay. And. This is the scenario that I see play out numerous times a month. And I'm not telling you to not get a party bus, okay? I'm not telling you to do that. Just ask yourself, is the party bus necessary? Is it really that necessary? And if your ceremony and reception are at the same location, it's probably not. Scratch off the party bus. Start your ceremony two hours later than you were expecting. And I guarantee you that people will be there celebrating you a lot later than if you start it two hours earlier. So let me tell you about a real wedding that happened two years ago. It was literally two years ago, almost to the weekend. Um, we had this wedding with an outside ceremony starting at 3 p.m. It was over 100 degrees that day. As soon as the ceremony was over, they hopped onto a bus at 3.30. All the guests went inside to the reception hall. The wedding was just right outside the reception hall. It was beautiful. The party bus didn't get back for three and a half hours. Well, no, not the party bus. The party bus never came back. The wedding party made their way back three and a half hours later because the bus broke down and it was a 45 minute drive away from the, you know, away from the venue. Um, you know, other, you know, let's see, where was I in my notes? Several guests at the reception had to leave 
to go pick up members of the wedding party. And then other guests just had no idea why people were leaving. So they just left too. They were like, oh, I guess that's it. You know, and even though I was making announcements, we're expecting the wedding party soon. Kept music playing. Didn't matter. People were getting annoyed. They left. So meanwhile, I had no idea that this was happening. I had no idea that the wedding party was on a bus that had broken down 45 minutes away. Uh, I had no signal in this part of the country or the state. So I couldn't even communicate with them to even find out where they were at. Um, by the time we were ready to do the introduction, the venue was half full. Everyone there was hot. They were hungry and they were drunk, which is a terrible, terrible combo. I said combo. It's a terrible combo. Um, and that wedding was over. The, uh, we were packing up things at 9 p.m. It just wasn't ideal. And the only way you can keep your guests happy on a hot August day is by not booking the party bus and starting a reception at least two hours later. This was, or no, this is a bad trend in Nebraska, and I feel like I need to help those of you getting married by speaking up. You know, is it jealousy that I wasn't invited to DJ on the party bus? Perhaps. Because my dope ass mixes are way better, 100 times better than any playlist that you're playing off of Spotify. I'm just going to throw it out there. Just kidding. But it is. <laughs> this is all meant to be conversational. And if you want the party bus, then get the party bus. Especially if your wedding is in a different location. Like if you're having your ceremony at a different location than your, your reception, get the party bus. Get everybody. Build morale. Have shots. Take shots together. Pull off the dirt road. Take those pictures. It is what it is. I'm not bashing party buses. Um, but if it's all happening at the same location, then you just need to skip it and start later.